Manam is a library that is made up of several parts. The first thing Manam does is use Python to convert the Manam figures to a special language. This special language is transferred to a program called Cairo. Cairo turns this special language into a series of images, which are all the frames of our animation. At the same time that Cairo generates these images, it sends them to another program called FFmpeg, which concatenates all these images into a video. In general, Manum works more complex, but this way you can get a rough idea of how it works if you want to understand its source code. In this first section we will teach the traditional way of using Manum. First, you must create a Python file, with the extension .py, in this file you will find our animations. Remember to configure your VS code with your virtual environment, so that it recognizes the Manum commands. The first line of code is the import of Manum into our file. You must think that the code of each video rendered in Manum has to go inside a class, and this class must inherit from the scene class or variants. You can have multiple classes that inherit from scene in the same file, but it is not recommended to have many as it can get confusing. Later we will teach some good practices when making complex animations with Manum. The scene class has an abstract method called construct, this method is thought to be the function where the logic of our animation will go. Later we will explain in detail what these commands mean, for now just copy them. Once you have finished your code, you have to go to the terminal, activate your virtual environment if you have not already done so, and move to the place where your script is located. The way to use Manum is as follows. 1. Type the command Manum. 2. Enter the name of the script. 3. Then comes the name of the scene, that is, the class that inherits from scene. Remember that there may be more classes that inherit from scene in the same file. 4. At the end are the flags that indicate the video or image export process. Later we will go into depth with all the export options. To configure the output file as video you have to use the QM flags, the Q means quality and the M means medium. The Q flag always precedes the quality, in addition to medium, low or high. At the end, if there were no errors, Manum will tell you where your file is located. In case you want to export the last frame of the animation you can use the S flag. If you want your video or image to open automatically when rendering is complete, then add a P before the other flags. In case your scene has no duration, that is, no animations or pauses, Manum will automatically render your project to image, even if you explicitly indicate that it is a video. All it takes is a pause for Manum to render your file as video. This is the traditional way to work with Manum, but we are going to use Jupyter together with VS Code to make the work more didactic. Copy the class we just did. Open the command palette and create a new notebook. Select the kernel where you have Manum installed. Save the file respecting the Jupyter extension. The first code block, as I explained at the beginning, must be the Manum import. The meaning of the second line has to do with the size of the preview provided by Jupyter. What it means is that the preview is going to take 100% of the available width, you can play with other values. Paste the code you just made. To render this code with Jupyter you have to go to the beginning of the block and type double percent sign. This tells Jupyter that we are going to write a magic command. Next are the flags. You can omit the P from preview in this case. And at the end is the name of the scene. 
Run the block and see what happens. You may notice that the video is displayed on our notebook, this is quite useful for small animations and for people who are starting with Manum. You may notice that the info that Manum gives us is somewhat annoying, to ignore these messages and only show errors at the following in your magic command. Another command that I recommend including is disable caching, later we will explain what this means. Another way to work with Manum is to build our file as if it were a module. This function means that when Python executes our code, it will use the command you see on line 20. Line 19 gets the address of our .py script, so we only have to indicate the scene we want to render in the scene constant defined in line 6. Using the Python plugin for VS Code we simply have to click on the Run icon to render the scene. To change the scene we just have to redefine line 6. Remember to always save the changes before rendering your code. You can redefine the constant scene as many times as you want. Python will take the one that is closest to the final conditional. So far this is all you need to know to be able to work with Manum, for this course we will be using Jupyter mostly, but you can follow this course however you like. In the next class we will give an introduction to mobjects and the types of animations. See you in the next video.